it's time again for the show that asks the question, there must be more than one way to skin a cat, but they're all against as well. <laughs> for those who have seen the show before, let's just say forgive and forget, okay? <laughs> it's the Red Green Show, starring that Oscar-winning rabbit, your friend and my uncle. And believe me, there's a big difference. <laughs> Mr. Red Green! much. Welcome to the show and thank you to Harold for that warm and heartfelt introduction. Love you, babe. Let's do lunch. <laughs> no, let's do show, Harold. All right. <laughs> I've been to do up at the lodge this week. Uh, Moose Thompson has uh, been looking for work ever since the paint factory blew up, even though he did apologize. Uh, and he sees an ad in the newspaper for a male dancer. Now, Moose is not much of a dancer, but he more than makes up for it in the mail department. Excuse me, Uncle Red. Oh, I forgot about you. Uh, this here is my producer and my director, and by a cruel stroke of fate, uh, my nephew. And every time I start a story, he thinks it's boring. He just gets out of it by flipping some things on his flim flammer there. It's a switcher control box. It allows me to go from one segment of the show into the next, you know, in case I find it like um, a, a boring or offensive or something like that. It also allows me to do this. Pretty neat thing, huh? Well, I want to just continue my story on the male dancer thing. Oh, okay. nothing, nothing offensive or to be ashamed about uh, naked bodies or anything, that's for sure. Oh, no, no, not at all. I got nothing against naked bodies. Unless, of course, it's like during dinner. <laughs> creepers, creepers. I, naked bodies, okay, I'm as liberal as the next guy. You know, well, unless, of course, you're the next guy. Then I'm way more liberal. Because I enjoy naked men as much as the next person. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't. Oh, I said that was so wrong. There once was a story a long time ago, a legend that only the possums know. Possums are smart and fun to throw. As long as you yell, look out below. With a whiff and all, with an all, with an all. Wombat, with an all, with an Did you catch a whiff of that? <laughs> with a whiff and all, whiff and all, whiff and all. Wom wombat. Oh, you don't say wombat that time. Oh. <laughs> This week on uh, Andy Man Corner, we're going to show you how to take something and improve on it. Uh, what we're going to do is going to show you how to make a, uh, a portable phone for under $40. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? Here's what you're going to need. Uh, a wall-mounted phone, uh, an old backpack, a uh, garden hose spool, <laughs> and uh, a bunch of telephone cable. Now, if you want to go get that stuff, I'll just wait. <laughs> All right, now, uh, the first step is to uh, remove the canvas um, from the backpack. <laughs> How you do this, you can uh, end up with enough canvas to make yourself a dandy little sun hat. <laughs> All right, as you can see, I'm uh, just putting the finishing touches uh, on attaching the uh, garden hose reel to the backpack using uh, the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> now what we do is take our telephone wire and begin winding it onto the, to the hose reel. Now, the amount of wire you put on here uh, will be determined uh, by how, how, how portable uh, you want the phone to be. If it's just for uh, around the house, uh, 50 feet it'd probably do. Uh, 20 feet if you live in a new subdivision. <laughs> uh, or if you want the run of the whole neighborhood, uh, I'd suggest you put on a couple of hundred feet. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I'm just uh, finishing attaching the phone to my body with the uh, with the duct tape <laughs> and uh, and we're done uh, no more running to the phone because with this rig on believe me you don't want to be running <laughs> i'll get it <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, hello, could you just uh, hang on a minute, please? Yeah. Uh, this sounds like an important call, so until next time, remember, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was me. I ordered the eight slicer with the uh, double pepperoni. <laughs> yep. I'm on the way over to get it right now. How's my voice sound? I made this phone. Yeah, made it myself. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Hello, uh, 911. Could you, could you send an ambulance? Just follow the wire. <laughs> we'll be right back with more wildlife adventures amongst the furry beasts of the woods. I think he's back to the story about Moose Thompson being a new dancer. <laughs> going through the scrapbook uh, line last night, and I saw, I saw some pictures of some old celebrities, you know, guys that I'd known and worked oh, with. Oh, they'd have to be old. <laughs> well, they were not old in the sense of old, but just, oh, you know, okay. I mean, they've been celebrities a long time. That, right, right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Slim Whitman. King. Like, what can you say? Oh, I can say that because he does that when he sings. He does He yodels. That. Oh, and you should see the acrobatics he does with his guitar and everything, and he... He gets the hole right in the center and just does it's unbelievable. Oh, getting between the strings is the tough well, part. Well, it's not easy. No, huh? Huh? no. So I call him Slim. That's know? right. Yeah. And uh, Guy Mitchell, or Guy Madison. Oh. You know, Guy Mitchell. No, Guy Madison and Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah. Remember him? Well, I knew the stories. You knew him, Wild I, Bill Hickok? Well, yeah. Well, no, I, I know. I, I knew uh, Guy, Guy Madison. Madison. Who played one Yeah. Well, he yeah, has guns backwards. He'd say, oh. shoot straight and keep your guns backwards. That's so he can, like, shoot people, sneak up on them. Yeah. Yeah, he had a terrible accident. Oh, he's... The darn things went off, he blew his buns off at the rap party. Mm. It's all done that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it is winter. The windows are frosted over. Nothing can be seen through this white patchwork of ice crystals. The entire winter world is blocked from view. But don't worry. You know this road like the back of your hand. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Moose goes down and applies for this job as a male dancer. It was at the uh, Bamboo Bam Bam Club. Uh, he figured he'd be teaching widows how to foxtrot. So they told him to go home and uh, come back at eight, uh, dressed up in a costume, like uh, an Indian or a policeman or one of the village people. <laughs> so uh, Moose figures it's, you know, maybe I'll see some kind of a, like a costume ball or something. So he's looking around the lodge and he, uh, he finds an old moose decoy that we used one time uh, to draw the moose out during mating season. That's another story. So anyway, he gets the, the, the front half of the moose costume on, but uh, he needs somebody to be the other, uh, the other half of the moose. So that's moose with a small M, not a big M. Uh, and uh, Buster Hadfield says that he'd be the back end of the moose. Boy, talk about typecasting. Uncle Red, uh, I just want to remind you that, you know, some of our viewers have children and taste. <laughs> and maybe they won't appreciate this rivaled adventure. Well, I can't help that, Harold. I can. <laughs> Jack! Jack, come on up here. I know you're down there, Jack. What do you want? Well, nothing. I just thought we'd drop by and see how it's going, you know. Oh, 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 let me guess. Yeah. Western civilization has finally collapsed, and now all the smug know-it-alls who laughed at me for coming up here to live want me to take them in and give them shelter and see them through the coming dark ages. <laughs> well, uh, no. Uh, we were just on our way to the go-karts on 89, and we thought we'd just drop by, that's all. <laughs> oh. Okay. Do you need anything, Jack? I have everything I need, Red. Right. I'm a survivor. OK. And I didn't just rush into this in a blind panic. OK. I'll tell you that much. You know, I spent four weekends planning this. I even drew maps and bought heavy shoes. <laughs> all right, all right. But, but, but have you got enough food? I have everything I need. OK, oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Forget it. Forget it. I have nothing you would like. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh. I grow everything I need to survive. All right. Except all right. milk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What, what, what do you grow? Well, mushrooms, mostly. <laughs> no, but I, I've ordered some seeds, and they should be here soon. Yeah. Yeah, they said allow six to eight weeks for delivery. 
But uh, I'm hoping the world doesn't end, you know, before then, because I've ordered enough seeds to sustain a small colony through the coming dark ages. <laughs> well, you've, you've ordered a lot of seeds, then. Oh, believe it. Yeah. Uh, I want a bicycle and a, a slot car racing set. <laughs> sure, you know what? When your currency system collapses, yeah. you see, I'm going to take those slot cars, trade them for a cow, and then I'll have fresh meat and milk. <laughs> well, all right. Well, okay, Jack, if, uh, you know, if there's nothing that you need, you know. Nothing. I don't okay. need anything. All right, all right. Oh, well, an extension cord. <laughs> an extension cord. I think we have one in the truck. Uh, what's it for? Nothing. Something, but... Survival, I, I can't tell you. All right, all right, fine, fine, fine. Just tell me this. Will you, will you be able to give it back to us, you know, after the, the currency thing uh, collapses? Sure. All right. I mean, no. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> Stop the whale hunt now. Put your harpoons away or else. <laughs> Stop hunting whales, that's what you should do. And as soon as Harold and I catch one, we'll quit too. Yeah. <laughs> well, Red, this is so exciting, this is great. We got something really different on the mail call segment today. Just a little bit of a spin on it, something just a tad different. We got a letter from a kid. This could be huge. Just think about it, wouldn't that be great? This is, oh, this is very exciting. Let's read the letter, Harold. Oh, yeah, you know, okay, that's what I meant. I mean, this is going to change a lot of things. It's could be huge. Well, already the letter, already. Uh, dear Mr. Green, I like you. You do funny things. I like you when you hurt yourself and when Bill Smith hurts himself and when your nephew, Harold, hurts himself. <laughs> this is cute. Look at that. He spelled nephew with an F. Just one. That is cute. <laughs> I want to be just like you when I grow up. Can I have your autograph? Oh, I'm sorry, Harold. Uh, I'm using it. <laughs> yeah, you want to be like me, eh? Well, uh, you know, it's not that easy uh, hosting your own television show. If it was, uh, Harold here would be doing it. <laughs> Boy, you got that right. <laughs> but you know, uh, Harold, even if you have the right stuff, uh, as you know, uh, you got to get your education. Uh, I mean, I use all those subjects uh, every day. Adding, subtracting, uh, social studies, uh, metal shop, gym. <laughs> well, because you need the literacy, or you can't read the cue cards, and uh, then you have to rely on your memory. I guess that's, that's about it. Where was I, you know? We <laughs> were talking about education. It was very exciting to see you take a stand on that, Uncle Red. We should also mention to our viewers about college and university. Well, I don't know about that, Harold. Uh, I think uh, college education is, is a drawback for being a TV star. Uh, makes you think about things. <laughs> As for university, well, it's just a, just a bunch of eggheads uh, walking around between the trees saying things like, uh, hence and therefore. <laughs> oh, no, Uncle Rad, if I might just step back a step or two, in my opinion, education is very important. We should be stressing to our viewers that to go on to college, learn as much as you can. That's my opinion. <laughs> do that, Harold. Yeah, I didn't go to college. And you didn't go to college. And look at this. We're self-made men. Oh, sure. Blame me. <laughs> this week uh, on Adventures with Bill, we're going to deal with uh, a problem that a lot of people have in the woods, and that is mosquitoes. Uh, they don't bother me. Uh, mind you, I have flies in my pants. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, Bill, uh, Bill has a real problem. And they seem to just... There are people like this. They just seem to go for them. Quite a few of them going for Bill in this particular uh, home. <laughs> so uh, what we're trying to do is show you some of the various ways that, uh, you know, you can protect yourself from the, the mosquitoes or black flies or gnats or, or pterodactyls or whatever it is that comes after you. This is uh, taking some uh, vinyl screening and uh, just wrapping yourself up in the screen, like making yourself into a porch, really. Uh, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is Bill's own idea. And, you know, you want to give that a real good tug, you could probably start them up like a lawnmower, you know? <laughs> I don't think this one's very effective. And this is another, this is a concoction made up of uh, lemon juice and honey, I believe it is. And uh, uh, according to Bill's grandmother, um, I think she said this is a, this works real well. Come on, she was covered with bee stings. <laughs> and you know what we discovered, unfortunately, was that this actually attracted uh, the mosquitoes. Well, it could have been worse. It could have been on me. <laughs> and now uh, this is uh, 
uh, more of the uh, <laughs> unusual approach. He's made himself completely airtight to some tape and a uh, bug jacket. But unfortunately, <laughs> there's a mosquito in there with him. Down, down, no, no, it's up in the arm, up in the arm. Down, it's over the, you can't see it, of course, because inside. It's over here now. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the jacket. So I'll, I, I thought, I thought I saw it go by his face. Oh. <laughs> I got it. Now this is uh, the conventional method. These are the aerosol cans with the CF, F, CF, F, CF, 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 in them that are punching the hole over the Antarctic. Who cares, you know? Anyway, uh, I'm going to be using the double, the double dose here on Bill. And, uh, <laughs> you know they say there, it's, it's, uh, it's a nerve gas or something that it can, it can actually, uh, it can actually uh, completely destroy the human mind. <laughs> Uh, which I didn't realize Bill uh, was a pip, so I was, I was, that was a little cruel, I think, on my part, but fun. So Bill showed us some of the other, these are various hand lotions, uh, I think that Avon has one and so on, they, they, they work real well in the woods, uh, apparently they work, uh, they work as well as any uh, bug repellent, uh, and what you do is you just you hold out your hand there and just put it on there and... <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how that happened, but... I guess he had it set for a sprinkle or something. Anyway, I managed to clean most of it myself. It is winter. My skis swoosh under me. My feet thrown left and right. I struggle to stay upright. I'm out of control, going too fast, falling, slipping on the edge of disaster. I hate these T-bars. <laughs> All right, uh, at this point in the show, we uh, like to have a feature where you can kind of get to know Harold and, and the young people of today and, and the difference between the two. <laughs> huh? Progress, friend or foe? I don't think so. <laughs> Should things be expected to get bigger every year? Think about your aunt. Maybe things are okay. Maybe things should just stay the same or get a little worse. Hear me out. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. okay, implying that things should get better every year says that maybe something was bad. Well, maybe it wasn't bad. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was so good that it could only get bad. That could happen, right? That could happen, sure. And I've learned to accept that. I don't, I don't think that the older generation has, though. No, I, I don't think that at all. And if you agree with me that that could happen, that that could happen in this lifetime, would you please phone my parents and tell them that D-minus is not technically failing a course? <laughs> please? Don't go away. We'll be right back with more features, more guests, and the spine-tingling conclusion of the story of Moose Thompson, Dancing Buff. That's short for buffoon. <laughs> If you uh, have a teenager in your house, I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, unless you're Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> There's only one thing that you need to remember with a teenager, and that is that every one of them needs a shower. Some of them actually need a cold shower. Some of them should be dipped in ice. <laughs> you want to keep your kid clean, and you want to keep them at home. Uh, if you want to keep your kid out of trouble with uh, the police, uh, the dermatologist, and the obstetrician, keep them in the shower as much as you can, and make sure they're alone. <laughs> with uh, my good buddy uh, Dougie Franklin and what has to be uh, more truck than I ever thought possible Doug. Well Red you gotta have yourself a big truck if you're gonna be crushing cars and uh, you know crushing cars it's fulfilling it's a fulfilling job but you got to take it in perspective it's only one small facet of the truly the truly balanced existence and it should be treated as such. Well, now, this is, this is an excellent message to the, to the young people of today, uh, Dougie. Uh, uh, driving a monster truck is just not the be-all and end-all. No, oh, you can say that again, yeah. Red. I mean, there's, uh, there's a polishing her, uh, <laughs> polishing her up. There's uh, adding stuff to her. Like them lights up there, I, they didn't come stuck. I put those on myself. Oh, right. And, you know, then there's... Uh, 
There's paying for it, too. That's a challenge. And the young folks, they need a challenge today, Red. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> you just know so darn much about trucks. Well, you know, you take her apart so many times and uh, put her back together, and it's only a matter of time before you figure what them extra parts is you got left over. And of course, you got to take her all apart again. And after a while, you know all about it. Look, I'm gonna, hey, that does make sense. It does make sense. Are you going to start her up for us? I, I thought you were going to say that. I wasn't going to say I'd it. love you to do that. You know, there's a vibration so. going on there here is, today, uh, isn't there? It's like it's like you're picking up on my beach. Love you, big guy. I love you, I too, care. Red. Now, look, right. I'm going to start her up, and I'll uh, just tell you as I start her and go through the uh, operation of her, OK? Well, that sounds great. We've been looking forward to this. Uh, it's like it's going to start uh, start her up for us. All righty. Great. We got ignition. All right, go ahead. <laughs> take this baby out. No, no, I don't think so. <coughs> Dougie Franklin, a uh, man of few words. I think maybe I should, uh, I hurt when she was going there. I shut her down, I was hearing a bit of a tick. I think I'll just start her up one more time. Start her up again? You, you don't, don't have mind. to. I mean, we've, we've heard, we've had, if you don't want to. Uh... Well, it's, it's for my own edification. You carry on what you're doing. <laughs> batteries, batteries going on me. Oh, that's too bad. <coughs> there is a God. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to finish off about Moose and Buster down at the Bam Bam Club in the Moose costume. They're down there and uh, they come out on stage in front of about 400 revved up women who've paid 20 bucks each and it isn't to see costumes. <laughs> and the stereo's pumping away there and the two of them are staggering around on the stage and uh, suddenly uh, Moose's foot catches the costume and rips a big hole in it. Well, the women go wild. They're trying to see why they call him Moose with a big M. And uh, golly, they're going nuts in there, and uh, they're holding up uh, $10 bills and yelling, take it off, and suddenly Buster and Moose realize what's going on because they were sitting in those same seats a week earlier holding up $5 bills when it was ladies' night. <laughs> it suddenly struck them that this form of entertainment was tawdry and exploitive and darn profitable. <laughs> well, golly, the two of them come home from there, and they had uh, their underwear full of money. <laughs> which no bank will touch. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, it, was a, it was a great time, and uh, if my wife is watching, I'm coming straight home, and there is nothing in my underwear that wasn't there when I left this morning. <laughs> so, on behalf of myself and uh, Harold, that says it all for me, and the rest of us up here at the lodge, keep your stick on the ice.